Dave, how was, uh, how was the boxing, first of all? You took your players yesterday to see Tommy Martin to go through a few things. How did they, how did they find it? Well, we've had a really interesting week, to be fair. We, uh, we came in, obviously, after the game on Monday. Um, had a really good day training and recovering on Tuesday. Um, and we, we decided that uh, we wanted to, uh, to mix things up a little bit. We've gone with a, a real clear... Um, mindset and what we wanted to achieve this week and a real focus and we know that in the game against Swindon we're going to have to earn the right to play so we decided that we would focus on that on Wednesday which we've done and, and listen Tommy was brilliant uh, and all of his management team who come down they really put their lads through their, uh, through their paces and um, the lads took to it really really well we've had a, a great day's training working on the football side of things and we'll just nail down and box down really the organisation and discipline stuff um, that we need ready for ready for Saturday's game against Swindon so yeah it's been a, a really interesting week so far um, and we're really looking forward now to the challenge of Swindon on Saturday. And is it important for you as a management team to look for things to keep it fresh to keep the players inspired and interested on and off the, the training pitch because we're getting towards the end now of a, a long hard season aren't we? Definitely we, we've had a look at that and obviously um, when we first came in we also introduced the legends and I think uh, with any group of players, I think when you want them to be successful and they need to see that success, I think calling on some of the, the legends of the football club, when we had Kenny Charlery in, we had Dave Farrell working with him, we had Tommy Robson come in and do some work. So I've had some really, really interesting people just to, to mix things up a little bit, but also to, to share some of the um, uh, some ideas, some tips, some, um, some questions that the players can ask them to... Uh, to find different ways in which they can be successful themselves and um, listen it was something a little bit different and, uh, and outside of the box with, with Tommy but he was an ex-player with us here and, uh, and a magnificent talisman in all of his time that he spent here um, so we went down that route really to, to show the players the importance of earning the right to play but then being brave enough with the football to be able to play then after that and that's exactly what we're going to be looking for them to do this weekend. The chairman came out this week and said he's coming over in May to start interviews for the, the manager's job um, and he includes you in that as well. Are you still as hungry for the job now as you were at the start? Because I remember you came out and said my hat's well and truly in the ring. Have you still got that hunger for it? Well, I'm even more hungry now, to be fair. He's laid that gauntlet down to me. He's laying the gauntlet down to the players um, to have a real final push in these final five games. Uh, and, and listen, it, uh, it definitely, definitely, definitely ain't over for us where... Um, we're hungry for it, we want it, um, myself, the rest of the staff, the players, everybody here, um, we've done it with magnificent support from the fans so far, um, so for me, listen, I am, um, I'm staying positive, I'm staying upbeat about things and um, listen, do we want it, we all want it because we all need to want it if we're going to be successful uh, and that's the messages that we've uh, we've been putting into the players this week. Because you've always said that, haven't you, that it's not about you, it's about the team and the, the football club but from a personal point of view, there's a lot at stake of these last five games, as there is for a football club, because as you say, you, you still want the job long term. Yeah, there is a lot at stake, but listen, the, the most important thing is that, that we have a real push and a real go at trying, to, um, at trying to win these next five football matches. The next five football matches that we've got, uh, we've got nothing to lose and everything to gain. There's no, there's no pressure on the players. Um, the pressures are all internal, the pressures that we put on ourselves because we want to be successful in every single football match that we play, um, whether that's a run of five, whether that's a run of nine, whether it's a run of uh, uh, 46 throughout the course of a season. So that's what we do anyhow. So um, there's nothing changing here. Um, we're going to be keeping on focusing on, on what we need to do, what we need to do game by game, week by week, um, and everybody is up for the fight. In a funny way, the equation just has got a lot simpler, hasn't it? You need to win these these five matches, and in a, a funny way, I suppose that makes your job easier, you know, in a sense, because you you know what's exactly required from your players. Yeah, definitely, and that's exactly what we all need to do. We we all know that, um, but bizarrely enough, it doesn't put more pressure on us. It, it it takes the pressure off us because of you know what we can go and we can be more expansive. We can um, we can take a few more risks because of you know what. Uh, that's what we do. We need to be brave. We need to be courageous, uh, and we need to play with a real urgency um, in everything that we do. We need to train. We need to work day to day in the exact same way. If that's what we're going to produce on a Saturday, um, so that's what we're doing. That's what we're continuing to do. In and um, listen, I'm really looking forward to it. You tweaked the formation, didn't you, on on Monday, and got plenty of attacking players uh, in that formation. Do you? 
go with the same kind of thing again against Swindon or do you have to just temper it a bit because obviously they're a strong attacking side as well? Well, listen, we'll have a look at it. We've obviously analysed Swindon's last couple of games, myself and, and Grant McCann have watched them both, the game against MK Dons on Saturday and then also the game against Bristol City um, the other night. So, yeah, it's quite interesting. They played against a 4-4-2 with split strikers with MK Dons and they played against a 3-5-2. Both formations we've worked on, both formations we've had success with. So um, it's something that we'll have a look at and we'll, and we'll be reviewing um, this afternoon in our final team selection meeting that we have um, and then we'll be naming the squad and doing our final bit of shape and, and preparation work ready for before we travel to Swindon. Mm. Just looking at some of the reaction from their results over the over the Easter period certainly there was a feeling they were well under under par against MK Dons and, and deserved nothing but actually played pretty well against Bristol City despite the fact they they lost by quite a big margin in the end. So is it difficult to gauge whether this is a, a good time to be playing Swindon? Uh, listen, it, it, <laughs> we go back to it. We look at everybody in different ways. Um, the bit for me, they've got three three suspensions. Um, two of them are key players. Obviously, Branco's out because he got his book in the other night in the Bristol City game. Nathan Thompson's out for the second game. Um, who's a big player for them at centre half, and they'll and they'll miss him, and they'll miss Kasim in the middle of midfield because of um, he plays a pivotal role in everything that they do. So um, they do have that. They have a number. Of, they have a number of of other challenges going on um, themselves. But uh, listen, I'm interested in Swindon. All I'm interested in is Peter United and what we do, uh, and making sure that that I can take this group of players into this game in a positive frame of mind. Um, with an assertive mindset that you know what we want to go and win this, we want to win it in the right way, um, and, and that's what we'll be aiming to do. Mm. Is there a, is there a case to say when you go to somewhere like Swindon, you have to, as you did at, at Sheffield United and Doncaster as well, just try and take a bit of the, the sting out of the game first, and then impose your, yourselves on the game as it grows in, in you know in time period? No, listen, we play we play our our, our game and and our way. Um, from start to finish that's what we'll be looking to do we know there'll be different waves in the game but um, the players are prepared the players understand that and they know how to manage that and the decisions within the game um, listen they're an excellent group of players and they have good understanding and um, they'll be taking that across the white line on Saturday um, and listen and we'll be going for it uh, first and foremost we will be going for it and we will be asserting ourselves on the game uh, and not overly and not overly worrying about Swindon we'll be aware of what they do um, but we're focusing on us right now because that's what we're going to need to do to be successful You would have come across Mark Cooper I would imagine would you when he was here for a very very short period did you did you see him at all speak to him much? Yeah I did when he was the manager uh, and obviously I was the academy manager at the time um, I had some brief conversations with him and, and he's moved on to uh, obviously to Swindon now, and he, he's um, he's got his opportunity to get back into management there uh, after he left Posh. So um, listen, Mark's Mark uh, will be uh, will be competitors for ninety minutes, and I'll shake his hand, and we'll get on with things after that. How you look in terms of your, your injuries this weekend? John Taylor obviously was, was struggling again at the, the weekend. What's the latest on him? Uh, everybody's fit. Uh, Towles is a 50-50 at the minute. We'll be doing a fitness test with him tomorrow. Um, but other than that, we've got the full squad available to us, which is, uh, again, very pleasing. Um, I think we had, uh, we had some challenges last week with, uh, obviously, illnesses to to Jack Payne and Marcus Madison, uh, and then the injury to John Taylor as well. So um, that kind of disrupted us a little bit last week, but we're we're back on it. We're really focused. We've got everyone available, um, and, and Towles will be doing a, a fitness test tomorrow with a physio, John Chatfield. Mm. Is it his knee again, Taylor? Yeah, it is. He's got a, a, he had a slight sprain in his medial ligament, and they've been managing it this week, and he's been getting some uh, some treatment on it with John and... Um, we're going to test it tomorrow to see if it's going to be able to hold up to um, listen the, the rigours of a full 90 minutes. And if it does, then listen, it'll be available for selection. And if it doesn't, um, then obviously we've got plenty of options available to us. Do you just have to treat him with maybe a touch more care? That's maybe not the right way of putting it, but because of his recent history, he's had that knee problem, had surgery, came back, it still wasn't quite right. Do you have to bear that in mind when you're thinking about 
whether he starts, whether he features from the bench, etc. The main thing is, is I need to take the advice of the physio. The physio here is excellent. He does a fantastic job. Um, and the bottom line is, I'll ask him the question directly. What's the risk? What's the risk of it um, of it going, getting worse, and then him being out longer term? And that's something that I don't want because John Taylor is a key player for us here. Listen, as is a, as are a lot of others, which is uh, which is really pleasing. But what I don't want to do is take any risks that's going to extend that length of time out. So maybe I have to, if I have to sacrifice him Saturday to get him back Tuesday and the the, the running for then the final four um, games of the season, then. Uh, those are decisions that, I, that I'll have to make, but I won't go against physio. Mm. With a, a fully fit squad to choose from, you've got diff, you know, difficult selection dilemmas again, haven't you? And would the three lone players be part of that? Because they all missed out of the squad completely on Monday. Do you think about bringing them back in or is there no room? Is that just one of the tough conundrums you've got to try and juggle? No, listen, everybody's available. Uh, everybody's available for, for contention. No one's no one will be ruled out. I'll be meeting my staff now. Um, I have a good idea in my own mind the way um, with the with the starting squad, and then we'll um, and then we'll discuss things over the the rest of the uh, the team that travels. So yeah, it is tough, uh, but that's management, and I'd rather be in a position where I've got twenty four excellent players to to choose from um, than just having a, a bare eighteen. Mm-hmm. And just a word on Marcus Madison, we all saw what he was capable of when he first came in, had a wonderful run, didn't he, when everything he touched seemed to turn to goals or, or assists, had a spell out, and he's found it, I think it's fair to say, difficult to rediscover his best form since then. How key is getting the best out of Marcus, do you think, to getting big results between now and the end of the season? Because he's kind of the kind of player who can turn a game and just give you something when you, you desperately need it. Yeah, listen, Marcus is a match winner. That's exactly what he is. He's the sort of player that can produce that little bit of magic um, that can win you that can win you a football match. Uh, everybody in the dressing room knows that. Um, all of the staff know that. Everyone at the football club knows that. Um, Marcus, to be fair to him, he's working hard to um, to get that form back. He's doing everything that he can. So, uh, listen, we're quite we're quite excited about uh, about Marcus and Marcus's future. So, um, we're going to keep working with him. He's going to keep working hard. And uh, uh, listen, if we can get him back to his very, very best, he'll be devastating in this league. Because he's too good a player, isn't he, not to have an impact on a, a regular basis? We saw that early on in his posh career. Yeah, definitely. But all players uh, and all young players go through um, go through dips in form. They go in uh, on good run, uh, on a good run of form. And what we need to do now is do everything with Marcus to get him back on that positive run going into these final five games because he can have a, a big impact for us, as can Erhan in that number 10, as can Luke Williams, as can a number of players that we've got. So, uh, yeah, we're working on them all and um, and hopefully we can get them playing and perform into their top levels. Good luck. Thanks a lot, Nick. Thank you, Dave. Excellent, mate.